Christmas is no doubt a day of happiness, but not everyone knows how to enjoy it. It's a beautiful night on Christmas Eve in London. The streets are decorated with lights and Christmas garlands. Both adults and kids are singing songs and welcoming the big day. One of them is Harry, a lively young man who knows how to enjoy Christmas and help others enjoy it too. However, he fails when it comes to his rude uncle Ebenezer Scrooge. He's still busy with work and got out of his office to run an errand along with his dog Prudence. Harry follows his uncle and keeps insisting he participates in the celebration. Scrooge ignores him and reaches a small shop. Two elderly ladies are standing there collecting donations for the poor so everyone can enjoy Christmas. Instead of helping them, Scrooge warns them to leave the place, otherwise he'll report them to the police. Yeah, that's how old Scrooge is. He just loves money and won't spend a penny on others. He came here to take back the money he lent to the shopkeeper. The poor shopkeeper's mother was sick and the money was spent on her treatment. He asks Scrooge for another week to collect money, but the cruel man just gives him two days and doubles the required amount. Afterward, he returns to his office. Harry follows him too and requests him to spend Christmas with him. Scrooge scolds him for asking the same question every year, even though he knows that Scrooge hates Christmas. It's the day his beloved sister Jen died while giving birth to Harry. Scrooge calls his nephew a disaster that took away his happiness. Poor Harry feels heartbroken and takes his leave. That's how Scrooge spends every Christmas, working in the bank that was given to him after the death of his business partner, Jordan Marley. He doesn't even give a paid holiday to his only employee, Bob, and also cuts his salary for accidentally spilling ink. Bob mentions his son Tim's illness, but Scrooge doesn't care. He even sees Bob taking care of his two little kids and giving a part of his salary to the Christmas donation, but that doesn't melt his heart. He closes his bank at the usual time and heads off to his house. Scrooge sits beside the fire and doesn't repent a single of the thousand mistakes he made tonight. Though he doesn't celebrate Christmas, a gift is waiting for him. The fireplace blasts all of a sudden and everything around starts to freeze. Mysterious chests drag there out of nowhere and open up to release several chains. They bind around an icy smoke and take the form of an old man. It's the restless soul of Marley. He was a greedy man just like Scrooge and never spent a penny in kindness and now he's suffering the punishment. He made these chains yard by yard by showing greediness and unkindness. Numerous other souls are suffering from the same nerve-wrecking punishment, but Marley doesn't want Scrooge to end up like this. He informs Scrooge of the three visitors who will come for him at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and 3 a.m. respectively. Each will give a valuable lesson and Scrooge must learn from it before it's too late. After delivering the message, Marley disappears without leaving a trace. Scrooge tries to convince himself that it was all a dream, but he can't go to bed either. He waits for the clock to hit one and confirms that his experience wasn't real. Unfortunately, he's wrong. The ground starts to shake and a huge amount of melting wax appears. It takes the shape of a lovely lady who came here to show Scrooge's past. She summons a portal that sucks down Scrooge and drops him far back in time. He can't interact with this alternate world but can see everything happening before his eyes. It's the time when Scrooge was just a young boy. His father was under huge debts and the poor boy needed to work all day to not let his mother and sister starve. It's Christmas Eve and Jen comes to meet his brother. She brought a Christmas present, but she's still not feeling well. Scrooge holds her in his arms and advises her to breathe slowly. This reminds adult Scrooge of Bob and his sick son. Scrooge's life got better when his father paid off the debts and treated Jen. However, she was really naive and died while giving birth. The candle lady takes Scrooge a little further in time when he was a young man. He left Mr. Fezziwig's factory and started working with Marley as a banker was a better career choice. Scrooge wanted to earn more to impress Freswig's daughter, Isabel. He was madly in love with her. Freswig is aware of his interest and invites him to Christmas dinner. Scrooge can't get paid leave, but it's worth it. He danced for hours with Isabel that night. She taught him what happiness is. It can be felt and seen in the arms of the person you love. The watch Scrooge carries around is also a gift from Isabel. They were a perfect couple, but didn't end up together. Scrooge got really busy at work and always told Isabel to meet him later. She used to visit him every day and bring fresh lunch for him, but Scrooge didn't have time for her. Humans are habitual of taking things for granted until they lose them. On the next Christmas Eve, Marley insulted a man for not paying back his debt and handed him to the police. Scrooge was there too, and the man being humiliated was none other than Bob's father. Now Scrooge is doing the same cruel treatment to Bob and his family. Moreover, Isabel was there too. She heard everything and felt disappointed in her choice. The next day, she went to the bank to call off the engagement. But Scrooge didn't have time for her like always. She kept begging for attention, but didn't get any. The time stops for a while and the old Scrooge yells at his younger self for being so insensitive. He was running after money while all he needed to be happy was Isabel. Unfortunately, no one waits for you forever. Isabel found another man and started a happy family. 
Seeing this, Scrooge begs the Candle Lady to help him change the past. Definitely, it's not possible. All he can do now is fix his present so he doesn't regret it in the future. The clock strikes two, and it's time to meet the next visitor. A weird setting appears around Scrooge, with numerous little light fairies flying around. There's a huge throne in the center, and a chubby old man is sitting on it. He seems scary at first, but turns out to be a really friendly guy. Just to change Scrooge's outlook on life, the old man does a whole marvelous concert with breathtaking fireworks. He wants Scrooge to see the beauty of this world, but the cruel guy doesn't care. This visitor is going to give a tour of the present, but from a different point of view. He takes Scrooge to Harry's Christmas dinner. Even after getting scolded every day, Harry still cares for his uncle. He gives the first toast to Scrooge's long life and success, but the guests don't seem amused. Harry explains that he never met his mother, but he knows that Scrooge loved her a lot. There's still a kind and loving man hiding inside his uncle that may come out one day. Seeing his enthusiasm, Scrooge feels ashamed of his rude behavior and for blaming Harry for Jen's death. The next house he visits is Bob's. He actually has many little kids, but Scrooge didn't know. He never bothered to ask how Bob takes care of his family with such a little salary. Despite that, Bob still respects his boss and remembers him in his prayers. After dinner, Bob asks his son to sing a song. Tim sings the same one Jen used to. The sweet melody and the memories attached to it bring tears to Scrooge's eyes. Poor Tim can't finish the song due to his sickness. This makes Scrooge worried for the kid's future. He wonders if he will recover or not. Seeing his concern, the old man advises Scrooge to change his deeds before it's too late. However, Scrooge still thinks his deeds have no effect on the future. The old man gives up and leaves him to the cruelest experience. The insights into the future. Surroundings change and the light fairies turn into little devils. A creepy grim reaper appears to show what the future holds. Everyone is gathered outside Scrooge's house and cheering for him. It's like a huge celebration going on. Everyone is dancing and singing. Scrooge assumes that they have started to like him, but little did he know this celebration is going on at his funeral. People are happy that he died and they are dancing around his coffin. Cluelessly, Scrooge follows them and reaches the graveyard. There he finds Bob and his daughter standing near a small grave. It's the poor Tim. He died. Bob couldn't earn enough to pay for his treatment and lost his son. Seeing this, Scrooge shatters into pieces. He wishes he had done a little more to save the kid. Tim could be alive if Scrooge had shown a little kindness. The sorrows don't end here. Another coffin is brought there, but not many people are with it. Even the priest is not interested in praying for the sinful man that's been buried. Scrooge walks near to read the name Stone. It's Ebenezer Scrooge. He died, but no one moaned for him. Instead, everyone is happy because Scrooge never did a single good deed for others. He tortured others for money and now he left without taking a penny with him. He meets the same fate as Marley. Numerous chains tighten around him and will make him suffer in the afterlife. Seeing his own death sends chills down his spine. Scrooge begs for forgiveness and a second chance. He will not make the same mistakes again. He will give people more time to return loans. He will kindly greet others. He will save Tim and he will do everything to fix his mistakes. The Reaper pushes him inside the dark grave and Scrooge keeps screaming for another chance. Fortunately, there's still time to repent. He wakes up in his bedroom and rushes to the window. He greets a man politely and asks what day it is. Thankfully, it's still Christmas. No more sad festivals. Scrooge is going to find his happiness and it can only be done by sharing it with others. He hurriedly dresses up and writes down a bunch of invitations. Then he gets out to the homeless kids he used to scold every day. Scrooge requests the kids to deliver the invitations and help him prepare for the dinner. The whole house is decorated and gifts have been packed. Scrooge gives each kid a gold coin and offers them to stay for dinner. He's still worried that no one may show up to his party. He has always been rude to them and they must hate him. Taking a deep breath, Scrooge opens the door. Surprisingly, everyone he invited has reached there. Scrooge is really delighted to see them all. He has prepared gifts for everyone. He cancels the debt on the shopkeeper and gives a huge amount of money in Christmas donations. He has finally accepted Harry as his nephew and gifts him Jen's doll he has been treasuring for years. The biggest surprise is for Bob. Due to his dedication towards work, Scrooge offers him a partnership contract. With each of his acts of kindness, he has reshaped the future. He doesn't have to spend any lonely days again and will not have an unfortunate death. It's never too late to start over again and Scrooge proved it. It's useless to cry over the past. All you can do is fix your present and earn a beautiful future.